The Delhi Sultanate The political formation known as Delhi Sultanate started from 1206 CE and lasted till 1526 CE. The period saw the rise and fall of five dynasties in India: the Slave, the Khalji, the Tughlaq, the Sayyid, and the Lodi dynasty. We do not find any mention of Delhi as a capital of any kingdom. This was because Delhi became an important city only in the 12th century. It was under Tomaras and the Chauhanas of Ajmer that Delhi became an important commercial center. The transformation of Delhi into a capital that controlled vast areas of the subcontinent started with the foundation of the Delhi Sultanate in the beginning of the 13th century. The Slave Dynasty The kingdom established in 1206 CE by Qutbuddin Aibak came to be called as Delhi Sultanate. He was one of the generals of Muhammad Ghori. From being a slave, Qutbuddin Aibak became the founder of an empire in India. It was called the Mamluk or Slave Dynasty because the early sultans called Mamluks had been slaves who had risen to position of power because of their intelligence and hard work. Mamluk is an Arabic word which means owned. After the death of Muhammad Ghori, Qutbuddin Aibak became the first independent Muslim ruler in India as he was not controlled by the rulers of Ghazni. The Turkish sultans faced many difficulties in India. There were repeated Mongol invasions from northwest. The Rajputs and others tried to regain their independence and there were many conflicts among the Turks themselves. It took the successive sultans almost 100 years to secure their position in northern India before they tried to extend their rule over Deccan Iltutmish Iltutmish was the son-in-law of Qutbuddin Aibak who came to throne in 1211 CE after defeating Aibak's son in the north he had to fight against the Turkish nobles and the Rajput rulers he brought Gwalior Malwa Ujjain Bihar and Bengal under his control he is said to be the greatest ruler of this dynasty and was able to repulse the Mongol attack on India led by Chinggis Khan We come to know about Iltutmish and his successors from the books written by Minhaz Siraj who lived in the court of Delhi in his book Tabaqat e Nasri written in Persian he mentions how Iltutmish was sold in the slave market by his brothers and later bought by Qutbuddin he completed the Qutb Minar started by Qutbuddin Aibak he was succeeded by his daughter Razia Sultana Razia Sultana after Iltutmish's death his able daughter Razia Sultana ascended the throne in 1236 CE. The scholar Minhaj Siraj acknowledged Razia's ability as ruler, but he also wrote that her abilities were useless as raising a woman to the throne was against the custom. Razia threw off her female attire and the veil and led the army in war. She successfully established law and order in her kingdom. The Chehelgani nobles conspired against her as they wanted power in their hands. They killed her in a battle near Delhi in 1240 CE. Her brother Nasiruddin succeeded her. He was a weak ruler who ruled on the advice of Balban. Balban, the chief advisor, became the sultan after the death of his master, Balban. After several weak rulers, Ghiasuddin Balban, a powerful noble, became sultan in 1266 CE. He continued Iltutmish's policy of suppressing revolts and strengthening the sultanate's hold over its territories. After becoming the sultan, Balban faced many problems. He had to defend his empire from foreign invasions of the Mongols and also had to deal with Hindu Rajput rulers and Jats who rebelled against him. Some of the nobles became very powerful and were threatening the position of sultan. To consolidate his position, Balban adopted few measures. which were he centralized the administration and reorganized his army he started the practice of sajda where the nobles had to kneel and touch the ground with their forehead and salute the sultan the nobles were not allowed to drink nor to attend parties no one was supposed to laugh or smile while at the court these measures instilled a sense of fear in the nobles and balban was able to curtail the power of the nobles when he died the turkish rule had been firmly established in delhi the ganga dwab and eastern rajasthan his successors were weak and incompetent and by 1290 ce the slave dynasty came to an end the khaljis a new dynasty came to power after them alauddin khalji 
Alauddin Khilji was the first Turkish sultan to build an empire in India. During his reign, the boundaries of Delhi Sultanate extended beyond the Vindhyas up to the Deccan. Being a shrewd administrator and a brilliant military general, he conquered territories in quick succession. He conquered Gujarat and Malwa in the west and Chittor and Jalore in Rajasthan. He then launched his famous campaigns into the Deccan. He was the first Delhi sultan to cross the Vindhya mountains. These campaigns were led by Malik Kafur, a slave captured in Gujarat. The kingdoms of south like those of the Yadavas, Kakatiyas, Hoysalas, etc. were defeated and plundered. However, these kingdoms were ruled indirectly as the rulers of these kingdoms were allowed to remain kings, but they had to pay tribute to Alauddin and accept his supremacy. Thus, Alauddin did not have to bother about the administration in these areas, but at the same time got regular tribute from these kingdoms which made him rich. Alauddin's administration To maintain his long-standing army, Alauddin needed large revenues. So, he adopted a bold market policy and controlled the prices of all commodities. Ziauddin Barani writes in Tariqi Feroz Shahi that Alauddin Khilji set up three markets at Delhi, one for food grains, one for horses, slaves and cattle, and the third for costly articles such as imported rich. The prices were fixed and quite low. The Sultan made arrangement for the government to buy all excess products non-perishable commodities which were stored in huge granaries a strict watch was kept over buying and selling and anyone cheating on price or weight was severely punished hoarding was prohibited an officer called saharai mandi was in charge of each market land was the most important source of revenue kharaj or land revenue was collected as a share of the agricultural produce alauddin khilji had land reassessed he fixed the rate of revenue at half of the peasants produce the revenue was collected directly by the state through special officers called amils appointed by the sultan alauddin paid his soldiers fixed salaries in cash and the peasants had to sell their produce to be able to pay the revenue to improve the efficiency of army the prices of horses were controlled horses were branded so that they could not be changed also a descriptive role or hulia of each soldier kept so that there was no substitution he had a very well organized intelligence system and spies kept him informed of what was happening in the empire muhammad bin tughlaq tughlaq dynasty was founded by ghiasuddin tughlaq who died in 1325 ce and was succeeded by his son juna khan who took the title muhammad bin tughlaq it is said that he was brilliant man with ideas far ahead of his times but he was not practical so most of his ideas failed this made him unpopular among the people who failed to appreciate his vision muhammad bin tughlaq laid stress on merit and raised many people of humble origin to high positions this offended many of the nobles and they refused to cooperate with him his empire covered the deccan and south states which alauddin had not annexed and also orissa and bengal He administered the Deccan and South directly. During his last years, there were many rebellions. The size of his empire created problems for him. As the Sultan rushed from one place to another to suppress the rebellions, many areas broke away and independent kingdoms were set up in the Deccan and the South like Bahamani Kingdom and Vijayanagar Empire. Shifting the Capital Muhammad bin Tughlaq decided to shift his capital from Delhi to Daulatabad. near Aurangabad he thought it to be the ideal place from where he would be able to control both north and south india everyone was asked to go away to daulatabad 1500 kilometers away from delhi isami was also shifted to daulatabad gives his account in his book photo salatin he wrote that the sultan ordered people to move to daulatabad promising them money and property he announced that delhi will be set on fire women in parda and sufi saints were dragged by their hair out of the house many children died because they had no milk only one tenth of the people reached daulatabad in this way sultan destroyed a well populated city later the sultan decided to return back to delhi as he could not check mongol invasion from daulatabad many more people died on the way back it caused a lot of discontent among the people token currency In an attempt to obtain more revenue, Tughlaq decided to issue token coins in copper and bronze. They had the same value as the gold and silver coins called taka. So now, 
people can buy any commodity with a bronze coin as they had done with the silver tolu since gold and silver are more valuable as a metal people hoarded these coins and used only bronze or copper coins for trade common people started making counterfeit coins at their home thus reducing the market value of the copper and brass coins so this plan was withdrawn later firoz shah tughlaq muhammad bin tughlaq was succeeded by his cousin Feroz Shah Tughlaq in 1351 CE he probably learned many lessons from his cousin's mistakes he used to please nobles and ulemas who allowed him to rule peacefully in fact there were hardly any rebellion during his rule he adopted a number of welfare schemes to appease the ulemas and common people irrigation systems were improved and many new canals and wells were dug leading to an improvement in agriculture many new towns were built like Jaunpur and Firozabad a number of schools and madrasas were opened to promote education a number of revenue reforms were also undertaken only the taxes allowed by islamic law were imposed and all other taxes were abolished Firoz Shah's death led to many rebellions his successors could not control the nobles the army had become weak slowly the empire shrank in size the moors invasion timur lang was the ruler of the region around samarkand The collapse of Tughlaq dynasty made the central authority weak which gave a signal to foreign rulers to attack in 1398 CE Timur Lang raided northern India for plundering it he ravaged the countryside carrying men and women as prisoners and ruthlessly massacring people he carried away enormous wealth and took along skilled artisans to work on monuments in Samarkand he soon left Delhi as he left Delhi depopulated the sultanate of Delhi which had already broken up before Timur's invasion now shrank to the capital city and a few villages around it the Delhi sultanate revived under the Lodhis who ruled from 1451 CE to 1526 CE Lodhi dynasty Behlol Lodhi was the founder of Lodhi dynasty who ascended the throne in 1451 CE he ruled for 39 years and his most important achievement was the conquest of the Sharki kingdom of Jaunpur Sikandar Lodi was the greatest of the Lodi ruler who conquered Jaunpur Bihar and the Ganga valley he shifted his capital to Agra he adopted many measures to improve the agriculture and the economy of the country Sikandar died in 1517 CE and was succeeded by his son Ibrahim Lodi who failed to gain support of Afghan nobles his uncle Daulat Khan Lodi the governor of Punjab invited Babur the king of Kabul to invade India and overthrow Ibrahim Babur invaded India in 1526 CE and founded the Mughal empire by defeating Ibrahim Lodi in the first battle of Panipat thus the Delhi sultanate which started in 1206 CE came to an end in 1526 CE administration in the sultanate The sultan was the most important person in the empire. He maintained law and order and was the chief commander of the army. The wazir and his deputies looked after the revenue department. Arizi Mumalik looked after the needs of the army. The Bariti Mumalik was the head of the state news agency. His agents called Barids reported to him with all the news from the empire. The empire was divided into provinces or subas which were further divided into sheikhs. Sheikhs were divided into parganas and parganas into village the head of the province was governor or mukti the head of the sheikh was sheikhdar the amil was the head of the pargana and the most important officer in the village was muqaddam or headman the nobles received salaries from revenue of places assigned to them these tracts of land or villages were called ikta the iktadars collected taxes from the peasants in the village and with this money They maintained soldiers under them. They paid a part of the tax collected to Sultan, the Sultanate in 15th and 16th century. The decline of Lodi dynasty saw Jaunpur, Bengal, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Malwa and South India having independent rulers who established flourishing states and prosperous capitals. Some of the states established in the period were small but powerful. and extremely well administered one such ruler was Shir Shah Suri 
who managed a small territory for his uncle in Bihar and eventually challenged and defeated Mughal Emperor Humayun. Sher Shah captured Delhi and established Suri dynasty. Although the dynasty ruled for only 15 years, it introduced an administration that borrowed elements from Alauddin Khilji and made it more efficient. His administration became a role model followed by the great Akbar when he consolidated the Mughal Empire.